morning, I want to take this humble opportunity, very good and chilly Thursday morning, to invite you to our daily devotion. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you. We thank you, King of all kings and King of all glory, even for this day, that you've enabled us to see and again, O oh God, enabling us even to have a moment to hear from you. Use me as a vessel, as your servant, that I may minister to your people, that, O oh God, they may have renewed of their, spirit, uh, of their uh, joy, they may have renewed of their strength, and they may purpose and seek to know you and to do your will. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome once again this morning. I want to share, to share about the blessing of obedience. The blessing of obedience. Once I mention the word obedience, there is something that clicks into your mind. What does obedience mean or what is obedience to you? Somebody shared with me, or somehow it looks like that true, it is true, that uh, probably the source of the many problems that uh, people are facing, or the source of many challenges that people are going through, is as a result of disobedience. And uh, today, and this morning, allow me to just submit to all of us, or to submit to you in particular, and as an individual, that uh, God is calling us to be obedient. Thinking, as I shared uh, on Monday, about disobedience in the Garden of Eden, which happens to be probably the source or even the curse or the punishment or the judgment that even God himself pronounced uh, to, the, to the mankind and to the world. And uh, thinking of disobedience and uh, having it in our broader perspective, that uh, once we are obedient, or thinking of Christ Jesus coming to this world, or coming to us uh, to save us from our sinful nature, or to save us from the sin, it is as a result of obedience that Christ accepted. He had all rights to deny, or to, uh, to say that I will not go, but he chose to come. So we see an act of obedience from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he obeyed. He obeyed the voice of God. He obeyed the instructions of God. He obeyed what God, told, uh, God the Father told him. And that's why he came that he may save uh, uh, the world, uh, uh, he may save humankind uh, from uh, sin. And basically today, in as much as we are still uh, comprehending and thinking of the new theme of this month, or as much as we are still in Easter, and the thinking of Christ and great benefit, and uh, thinking of the authenticity of the Easter that uh, we have uh, celebrated and enjoyed so many things. And probably even before I resume back a little bit to, the, to my theme, I've not lost the track, I'll come back there again, uh, thinking of uh, this Easter and thinking about the forgiveness of sin that we found. Allow just me just to read a portion in Luke chapter 24, verse, uh, verse 44 to 48, whereby I don't, I don't want us to miss the blessing of forgiveness in this month of Easter. The Bible says that he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled. What is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the psalm. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what, uh, this is, what is written. Christ will suffer and rise from the dead and on the third day he will resurrect. And, uh, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem, you are witnesses of the things, or you are witnesses of these things. I just wanted to read, to read that portion of scripture for us to know even the coming of Christ Jesus was prophesied by the prophets. And he said that it was written in the law of Moses, it was written in the prophets and in the psalm. That is where now we come to see how psalm is very important 
in, as, uh, uh, in our line as we try to understand Christ and his coming. And he said that, uh, that he opens, you know, this is the, all the, the story, the culmination of the post selection event as Christ was mentioning to them. As he continues and opens their mind and they understand the scripture, and they, understand, they understood what Christ truly me uh, meant when he said that uh, these things were foreseen. These things were there. These things, the prophets prophesied. But the turnaround of everything is when, now I'll come back there, when Jesus himself obeyed the voice of God. The prophets could have prophesied and all those things and what have you, but Christ himself obeyed the will of the Father, that he may come. In verse 46, as I've read, that uh, it was written that he had to suffer, that Christ will come and will suffer and will rise from the de dead and on the third day he will rise again. He said that and for those events, for him to suffer, for him to die and for him to rise and the, uh, is, is as a result that he may find repentance and the forgiveness of our sins, that his name may be preached, that we may preach in his name. And what amazes me is speaking of Jerusalem. And uh, Christ himself promised and said that we are the witnesses of this. You are the witnesses, uh, witnesses of what Christ himself came to do. Do you know there's no way you can be an, uh, an, effective, an effective witness if you are not obedient? You must be obedient for you to be effective in your ministry. You must be obedient for you to prosper. You must be obedient for you to make progress. You must be obedient for you to move from one level to another. You must be obedient for you to experience Christ working wonders and working miracles in your life. And therefore, that is where I'm coming now. When we are approaching the moment when we'll usher in all, when we are expecting the Holy Spirit to come, when we are expecting the Holy Spirit to come as Christ himself told his own disciples. And allow me to read that place when Christ himself told his disciples that you should wait until I give you the helper who is the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 1 to 4, uh, uh, Acts chapter um, uh, 1 uh, verse 2, uh, verse 2 to 4, this is what the Bible says. Until the day he was taken up, for, uh, up to heaven, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostle he had chosen. After this, in verse Acts chapter 12 verse uh, 3, it says, after, after his suffering, he showed himself to those men and gave them many conv convincing proof that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, take this very uh, 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 clearly in the verse 4, uh, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Allow me to just kindly repeat that text. He said that uh, uh, in one occasion in verse 14, while they were eating with them, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. The command that Christ expects them to obey. He said that do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about it. So that basically, this is to mean that uh, Christ spoke of this gift a number of times. And he told them that you have to wait. You should not leave Jerusalem. You should be very careful that you don't leave the place that I'm telling you. You have to wait for this gift. And my father promised to give it to you and is going to give you because I spoke about it. As we continue to seek God, as we continue to work on our uh, a monthly theme of reaching out by the power of the Holy Spirit, it's good to know that Christ is calling us to be obedient. 
Christ is calling us that we should listen to his voice and obey. When he tells us that we should, uh, we should stay where we are, friends, let us obey what Christ is telling us. I am trying to think what could happen if, Christ, uh, uh, if the disciples of Christ could choose not to stay where they were told uh, to stay. I was trying to think what could happen if these people or if uh, these children uh, of God, the disciples of Christ could choose that are now we have been told to stay here, uh, but we can just go on and continue with our day-to-day -day activity. It's a, the Bible says that uh, Christ told them what he told them before. And even the issue of obedience or uh, uh, the issue of blessing of obedience that I've told you that so many things may fail to happen in our lives if we are disobedient. And once we are obedient, a lot of blessing, others that even we know not about them, will be our portion. That the blessing which added no sorrow, as the scripture tells us, will be our portion. But again, I was trying to think, what if these disciples could just think of running away? What if we can choose that uh, we can go away with our own activities without seeking God, without obeying the voice of God? God is speaking to us. God is calling us to obey everything that is written in the Word. God is calling us to be faithful today. Are you very careful to obey the voice of God? God is calling us to obey even the little tasks and the little assignments that we have been given in our mandate, in our areas of jurisdiction, God is calling us to be very vigilant that we should not be ignorant even for the, with the works of the enemy, that we, may, we should bind, we should rebuke every forces of the enemy, things that are not lined with the word of God. We should not tolerate them. We should not allow any sin to find a place anywhere around us, anywhere around uh, 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 around our spiritual, our spiritual atmosphere, we should allow Christ to reign and to reign in our hearts as we trust upon him to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit, which will uh, enable us even to continue and to witness more uh, in, the works, uh, in the works of the kingdom. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.